Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back from Turquoise Street. I also have a group on Facebook called Brittany's Beads. Yeah. Today I'm going to be making some um, unisex or man masculine or men's jewelry today. So hopefully we'll get a lot done. Okay, so today we're going to be using several different things. We're going to be using the new Trailblazer collection by um, Jesse James Beads. Uh, this one's called Glacier Park. And we're also going to be using Northern Lakes um, and maybe even some other ones. I have so, several different types of leather. I think today we're gonna go with this, uh, I think it was called Camel Dark Gray, not 100% sure, but these are some great new colors that they have. Hi, Rosanna. So I think we're gonna use this one today. Like I said, when I first popped on, I think we're gonna try and do, I call them jewelry blitzes on my channel, but we're gonna do a, a men's jewelry blitz today. But this can really be unisex. Um, the first bracelet that we're going to make is gonna use this leather. It's, it's textured, it's gorgeous. Um, I also have one of these magnetic clasps. So uh, let's see, it's kind of hard to open them when they're not attached to a bracelet, but they're really, really awesome. Thanks, Lauren. And um, we're gonna be using the Glacier Park strand from the Trailblazer collection for the first bracelet. Um, I'm also going to use some 22 gauge wire in silver, this is Beetalon. And then I also have some slides. These are called a uh, crimp chevron slides. They're two cool chevrons. So the cool thing about these is they're kind of double-sided. If you wanted the texture on the top, use the texture on the top. If you just want it to be kind of a simple chevron, use that. And these are sterling plated. Um, so the thing that I really got me interested in using these beads for this project are these um, water, these are water buffalo uh, horn beads. And I love them, they're so interesting on this strand with the stripes, but when I cut it open, it's got a star on it and it's got a really cool pattern. So we're gonna um, use this, the face of the bead, which we don't usually do a lot. I sometimes do it on my channel. Um, but that's what we're going to be using today. So I need three of these from that collection. And I'm just going to try and choose some that are kind of thinner. So it looks like I actually have two thicker ones and two thinner ones. So I'll use the thinner ones on the edge and I'm going to just choose this guy right here. So I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. So if you missed your comment, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just try and point it out again. Um, also wanna have your favorite glue. So I think today I'm gonna use my GS Hypo Cement, but you can certainly use E6000. Um, and I also have Super New Glue, but I would probably go with one of these two before the Super New Glue. Um, oh, my mom's here. It's called Water Buffalo because it's made from Water Buffalo Horn. So good question. Not a lot of people know that. All right, so I'm just gonna cut my, actually I'm gonna cut the length of my leather first. I think this comes in 12 inch lengths and I've already pre-measured, this bracelet's gonna be for me, but it's definitely um, inspired for Father's Day. Um, it's I'm gonna cut it to the length of my wrist and I'm not really adding a whole lot of length for the clasp because the leather will fit into the clasp and then um, you don't want it to be skin tight on you anyway. So I have a seven and a half inch wrist and I am going to cut it at seven and a half inches. So I just measured it. Um, you can use scissors. I'm gonna try and use my snips here. And that worked perfectly. So we can glue this in later. Yes, it will stay up after the live is over and it'll also be posted to my YouTube channel at Turquoise Street. So as you can see, that just slots right into our um, magnet clasp. And what I'm gonna do so the magnet clasp isn't intruding, um, I'm going to put that off to the side and we'll glue it in later. Yeah, it does look like the texture of watch straps. And you know what? You can just make a really cool, simple bracelet by doing this. And it actually, you know, I really like minimalistic stuff too. So, 
or minimalist stuff, that would be just a really nice bracelet for somebody for Father's Day. But we're gonna embellish it a little bit. So I'm gonna find the middle of the bracelet and I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of wire. I never measure, this is probably five or six inches of wire. This is again 22 gauge, it's Beetle on German style wire. Put that off to the side because I don't need it anymore for the moment. And then I'm just gonna kind of find the middle of my bracelet. Not, I'm not really gonna be super accurate here, but I put the ends together and this is about where the middle of the bracelet is. So I'm just gonna mark it with my th fingernail so I can find it in a moment. If you want, you can use a pen, you can use um, pencil, anything. You can poke a hole in it just to make sure you know where the middle is while you're doing this part. So I'm gonna find my chunkier one and I'm going to take two, both pieces of wire and I'm gonna put both pieces of wire through my bead. Okay, I'm just gonna pull them to the middle of the wire. Well, I did not cut those equally. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna pull one to the left and one to the right on both sides of the bead. One to the left, one to the right. And then I'm going to set, I'm gonna find my fingernail mark on my um, leather. And again, sorry guys if I don't answer what you're saying because I'm focused on <laughs> the project. Uh, put that bead right there, hold it with my thumb. And it can, can be a little slippery at this point. And then I'm just gonna wrap down with one and wrap up with the other. And I'm only gonna go around once with each wire because I don't want the wire to become the focal of this bracelet and since we're wrapping in both directions yes the the magnet and the leather are separate so you don't need one to have the other um, and then so now we have that's what it looks like it kind of looks like a weird looking spider at the moment <laughs> but we'll fix it um, and then we'll just do the exact same thing on the other side before we make any cuts Okay, come down, come around the back, and there we go. So there's our first bead, and he kind of looks, like I said, like a, a weird looking spider. And actually now that I look at it, I would have done this a little bit differently. I would have come this one, taken this one down because I have one going up and one going, they're, they're both going up, but it's totally fine. It's anchored on there. That baby is never coming off of there unless you cut it off. So and then in the back, I'm gonna snip as closely as I can to the middle of the bracelet. And you wanna make it kind of as flush as you can because we don't want to be poked by our bracelet. Okay, I'm gonna do that on both sides. And I think I actually just snipped that, but it's okay. It'll be fine. And then through the magic of Facebook Lives, it'll be fine for now. <laughs> Might have to go back and fix it a little bit later. So then we'll go ahead and snip that. And then I'm gonna take some flat pliers. I think what I have right now are these. And I'm gonna press that down into the leather as hard as I can. Okay, so that way it's not, it's not um, cutting into our skin. Yeah, I did cut that. That's why you have to be careful. But like I said, through the magic of TV, <laughs> it'll be okay for our project. We'll sn push that into our leather. There we go. So there's our first piece. Okay, now I am going to take my sliders and I need to decide, do I want the pattern from the slider showing or do I just want, hey Katie, or do I just want the simple, I just want the simple um, look of the chevron, but you, like I said, you, you have two choices here. So I'm going to slide on one of my chevrons on this side 
and um, that's I'm just gonna leave it loose you can probably just like crimp it by grabbing your pliers and pushing like this and keeping it in place but he's gonna I'm gonna be okay I like kind of like the movement of this guy so we're gonna do the exact same thing again we're gonna take another one of these two more pieces of wire And I never cut them the same size. We're gonna put them through our bead. Bring it to the middle if you can. And I'm gonna do one up to the front, or one up to the top and one down to the bottom this time. So that way it's a little bit, it's anchored a little bit differently than the first one that we did do the exact same thing on this side okay so now we like I said we've got a weird looking spider right I'm gonna put him right there and start wrapping like we did before oh. actually this guy should go to the other side there we go. You can absolutely do that, Karen. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wire wrap. You can also twist them together underneath. I'm looking for a s not too much wire showing on the front of the bracelet. I only wanted two wraps next to each bead, which is why I'm not going crazy with the wire wrapping. Okay. All right, so we did that side. Come here. Just gonna move that guy out of the way as much as possible for right now. Okay. Okay. All right, so that guy is wrapped on as well. And it just seems a little bit more centered than this one where I went up for both. So I think for the second one, I'll definitely do that too. So we're gonna do the same thing. This time, hopefully I won't snip all of the wires. <laughs> There's one wire. Two. The other thing you can absolutely do to cover these wires, um, if you're worried about them coming loose, which I'm not really worried about, you can get a thinner flat piece of leather and once we've, we've finished wire wrapping, we can glue it here um, starting after the class down and it'll cover any issue and you won't be able to see it from the front of the bracelet. Or you can even use extras from the piece once you cut it to fit your wrist. So I'm just gonna poke that in there, and I think we moved it a little bit, but it's okay. Poke that in there. You can tuck these under each other too if you're super worried. Okay, so half of our bracelet is finished, or well, a little bit more than half of our bracelet is finished. You could use any color wire you'd like. Actually, I think gold would look really good against the black. Um, black wire, red wire. Uh, I just, the color I had was silver because I wanted to match the, the class. But absolutely, you can use black wire. I think that would look really cool. Still didn't cut them the same size. <laughs> that just tickles me for some reason. Okay, so now I'm going to put my second chevron on. Move them down to our bead. Put our wires through our last horn bead here. What's the weather like everybody, everywhere? It is hot here in 
Arizona. I have my air conditioning on and I'm staying inside. So, okay, we're going to do the same thing. Up. Down. Up. Down. Okay. All right, so here's our last one. Thanks, Shirley. We've got our weird spider going on, right? Going to move him just a little bit over. Sunny but cold in Canada. Okay. Uh, I'll go this way. <laughs> Julie says the same thing. She's in Arizona. Okay, so that side's ready. One more. We'll go up and down. See if I can move this just a little bit to the left. This is a little too close to our chevron. Here we go. I'll fix this part in a second. Ah, okay. There we go. And then the last wrap. 50s in Virginia. I see hot in San Francisco Bay Area. Cold and rainy in New Jersey. I have no idea what rain is anymore. Wait, hi, hi Heidi. We haven't had rain in so long. And I kind of expected that when I moved to the desert. But um, I guess we're in a drought. I didn't, I didn't know you could be technically in a drought in the desert because I thought it was just, you know, always drought conditions, but apparently we're behind severely in rain. So, Linda, you used to live in Phoenix. I love it here. Kathy's cool and overcast, cold and rainy in the 40s. Heidi, I swear your w weather there in Minnesota is like the weather in Cleveland where I'm from. You never know what's going to happen one minute to the next. Okay, we're going to snip our last wires here. So I'm going to do repeat that push down technique with our pliers. Keeps everything in place and from scratching us. So the last thing we want is our homicidal bracelet, right? <laughs> Terry, where are you from? There's a drought there too. Yep, just like Ohio, Heidi. Okay, so I love this. And honestly, I think that would look really good with the, it's gonna look really good in a stack with the bracelets that we're making. And somebody asked me a good question. They said, do men wear stack bracelets? I said, yes. <laughs> None of the men I know really wear jewelry, but um, I've seen so many men wearing more than one bracelet and it just makes me happy. It makes me happy when guys wear, wear jewelry because they can rock jewelry too, right? So. I'm going to put some glue. Sorry, my GS Hypospent is always on its last legs in my clasp. Actually, he might be dead. Yep, that's the saying from where I'm from, from Cleveland, too. Uh, if you don't uh, like the weather, wait five minutes. <laughs> Your oldest son, Heidi, does he, um, does he stack bracelets? Does he wear a lot of jewelry? So I'm going to clean it off the edges, but I'm trying to get as much as possible into the clasp and on the leather. Remember, we cut this to the length that we needed for the bracelet. So like I measured the length of my, my wrist and cut the leather down to that size. We don't want it to be too long because then your bracelet will be just too loose, but if it's too short, it's not going to close for you. So 
I'm just gonna hold that for a few seconds here. If you see any glue leaking out the sides, it's okay. You you can use a t uh, toothpick, tissue, whatever, if you don't wanna get the glue on your, your skin. I totally understand that. I'm very used to having glue all over me at all times, so I don't really mind. Okay, and then I'm gonna try and get some glue in the clasp. This glue is, like I said, pretty gross, but we're gonna waste not, want not, right? And then we'll put some on the ends of our leather. That's pretty cool, Heidi. I, I, you're gonna have to send me some pictures because I wanna see how he does it. All right, and then we'll hold that in place. Yeah, Laurel, my br brother would complain about his wedding ring too. He was oh, it hurts. <laughs> What? <laughs> he did wear a stretch bracelet for a little while, though. I have one uncle who wears some bracelets, but um, my dad won't wear jewelry. None of my friends will, although I do have a friend who's willing to model it for me. He won't wear it all the time. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I was going to say, did I put the, the clasp on backwards? But I don't think you can. It's the same on both sides. That would have been good to pay attention to but it's the same on both sides I was very scared for a second <laughs> so let's see we're, that that's not dry yet what we're gonna do is set that aside let that cure but here's our first bracelet so it's very masculine I love it that black and white anybody can wear black and white and I just got glue all over my mat so we're gonna close this up let that dry for a little bit but we have a ton to make still, okay? Um, I know a lot of people aren't the mo most comfortable using leather, and it's, I just wanna take you, take the, um, the scariness out of it. It's time for a new bead mat, apparently. <laughs> but I wanna take the scariness out of using leather. Um, there's no right or wrong, okay? Just make sure that your knots are secure. You have some backup glue and you'll be good to go. Today I'm gonna be using this two millimeter leather. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, guys. We're gonna be using this orange leather. And this this bracelet's probably not gonna match what we just made, but it's gonna be for the guy who is not afraid of color, okay? So I'm bringing us back to this Glacier Park strand. And um, we're gonna use some of these cream beads they're, uh, from what I understand, they're white African jasper. And then I'm also gonna bring us over to this Northern Lakes strand. So these strands, I don't know if you know, are also, um, they're use, made using Dakota Stones um, gemstone beads. So these blue beads are Sunset Du, I might say this wrong, Du Mortarite. I think it's demortarite. I could have said that wrong. They're the blue ones. So the dark, the small and the large are demortarite. And then we're gonna use this, and then we might use some of the metals from both strands. So I'm gonna, I already have one of these cut open, but I don't have a Northern Lakes cut open. Cut that open. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of you don't have men that'll wear it, but if we if we make it, and it's cool, they don't have a choice. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is make a knot here on the end of our bracelet to make a loop. So I'm gonna loop my, my two millimeter leather. You can use 1.5 millimeter leather, you can use one millimeter leather. We're using some large hole beads today. That's what's really cool about these, these strands. They'll fit two millimeter leather. But I wanna be very careful that I make the loop only large enough because guys I'm gonna start this is a beginner leather bracelet it's gonna be super easy you're not gonna believe how easy this bracelet is you just want to make sure that the leather will go over one of these 10 millimeter beads okay so it doesn't matter which one you want to use but we want to use yes Laurel if we make it they will come um, so make sure we're making the loop just bigger than a 10 millimeter bead. So what I'm gonna do here is just make an overhand knot, real easy, stick my leather through the hole, just make sure once we pull it tight that a 10 millimeter bead 
or whatever millimeter your bead is, you don't have to stick with 10 millimeter, whatever millimeter your bead is, that it'll pop through that hole, okay? So that's the perfect length. We don't, or diameter. We don't want it to be any bigger and certainly no smaller. So I'm just going to pull that tight, as tight as possible, and I keep checking. Hi, Catherine. I'm missing some of the combo here. Um, I don't know if I know, Teresa, what Petoskey stone beads are. I'll have to look that up. So, okay, we've got our loop made. Okay, I'm gonna grab, oh, I dropped my leather on the floor. I'm gonna grab, grab my glue again. Hopefully I'll close it more quickly this time. Hey, Lynn. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue in our knot. And certainly around where we're gonna cut off that tail. Okay. Now, I did tell you, I warned you guys, this is the easiest leather bracelet I've ever made, ever. And I love it because it's fast, but it makes an impact because you don't need it to be super fancy, super complicated to make an impact. Um, I'm gonna cut the leather here for now just to get it out of my way, but I might trim it a little bit closer after that glue dries. Okay, that was just the, the little tail, not my, rig, my big one. Okay. Jordana, this will be perfect for you if you're just learning. Okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna put on one of these white jaspers, white African jaspers. And I think these are horned, but we're not gonna be using these today because they're, the holes are a little bit too small for this project. And I'm gonna move it down. Like I said, we're gonna cut that little tail off. You can leave it if you want. I'm just gonna move it down up against our knot. Okay, isn't that a pretty bead? Look at the veining in there. And now here is where you'll want to make the decision of what kind of knot you're gonna use throughout the rest of your bracelet. I, just to make it super easy, I'm just gonna keep doing the same knot that we made here. But um, I would encourage you guys to learn, if you don't know already, already how to make a barrel knot because they make a little bit more impact. But you guys are not gonna believe how easy this bracelet's gonna turn out to be. Okay, so we have one knot here. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab some blue, but I think we want some metal in this one. I don't wanna leave it just beads and, and leather. So I wanna, I don't know if this will fit. Yeah, this will fit. Hi, Catherine's granddaughter. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm gonna trim this so it's got a point so we can see if it'll fit through that bead. If not, we can use a different spacer. Hmm, it's a little tight. So let's see. Just make sure it's not just that one. These would be good for 1.5 millimeter leather. What about these? Oh, this will work. Okay, so we'll scooch this all the way down. Yeah, barrel knots are really nice. They also, I about 60% of the time work perfectly for me and then the other 60 they laugh in my face. <laughs> So I try to only use them once in a while. Um, I'm going to put on, and you can, I don't know, do we want to use the 10 millimeter or do we want to go down to the 8 millimeter since we're using some metal next to it? N um, yes, this is Leather Cord USA. I'm trying to decide if I want to use the smaller bead. No, I think chunkier, larger beads tend to be a little bit more masculine. So, and then I'll just put on another spacer. Get a good grip on that, move it down. So this is more rustic bracelet. I mean, I guess this one's pretty rustic too, but this one will definitely be more rustic with the leather and just the knots and some metal and some stones. Yes, you're right, Laurel. This one's leading more to rustic, though. Okay, so guys, that's our pattern. We're gonna use cream, 
metal blue metal cream all the way down I told you this is probably not even worth a uh, tutorial but if you're getting into leather this is a perfect beginner project and the cool thing is you can make this as long as you want you can make it into a necklace you can make it into a wrap bracelet I've done both but it's a really great way to showcase the beads right because your your focus is on these beads and this really cool leather and you can make it any perfect for anybody. Thank you, Catherine. Oops. Move that down. What's everybody having for dinner? Everybody already eat? It's so early over here. I haven't eaten dinner yet, but I'm thinking about taco salad. Thanks, Laurel. I think I might need to trim this a little bit. It's getting a little bit rough to go through these. Or, okay, grab it and pull. This one might just be a little too short or a little too thin. Ooh, burgers, yummy. Anybody having a cookout tomorrow? Because I'm coming by if you are. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on to a different bead because that one seemed to have a little bit smaller inside. <laughs> Oh, so it's it's 12 hours ahead over in Western Australia. Wow. Well, you're more than 12 hours ahead of me. Okay, another African Jasper. Mmm, burger, burgers. Mm. You guys are making me want to make... I was going to make them tomorrow. Oh, I want to make my... I almost made a mistake. We want to make our knot here. I'm talking too much. Ooh, Heidi's making a feast. Yeah, she's in the future in Australia. <laughs> she's on Monday. We're still on Sunday. Okay, so we're going. Here's our bracelet so far. Like I said, you can make it whatever length you want, whatever type of jewelry you want. So, let's see. I feel like this would for a, a woman would look real well anybody really if you run into pearls this would be a really cool thing to do with large hole pearls It holds up, you know what, I've been using colored um, leather for a while and I think it holds up really well. It gets a nice season on it. Um, and of course, if you're wearing any dyes, you wanna be careful about wearing colored leather because it might seep into the leather, but I think it holds up pretty well actually. Yeah, I love pearls and leather together. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, we're at about five inches right now. Uh, I want to get this to seven or eight, or seven and a half to eight inches long. Um, and you kind of want to think about that if you're making um, a masculine bracelet or a bracelet for a man. 
typically their race wrists are a little bit bigger um, of course it's always dependent on the person but if you're doing a generic bracelet to sell at market or something like that you'd want to make them a little bit bigger for men or be able to add extenders to them okay so this guy on I feel like we had two on this strand that just were a little bit like micron smaller than the others. Okay, here we go. Yes, I really do like Leather Cord USA. Now because, and this is because I'm scraping it against beads that are a little bit tighter you will get a little bit of the end becoming frayed don't worry about it if you're using larger hole beads that won't happen it also gives it more rustic look i'm gonna get this guy on here oh hi mariel We're so close. <laughs> Who's more stubborn, Brittany or the bead? I think the bead. I just keep grabbing it and it's not working. Oh yeah, it is time for a blue bead. Gosh, thank you for pointing that out. I would have been really upset if I got that through and then wasn't able to keep it on. Okay, we might need to just switch to the next bead. Okay, so I'm gonna cut open my second strands so we can finish this up. There's also some golden obsidian on here, and I don't know if you see the flash, but that's why it's called golden obsidian. And then there were other sets of um, metal, or other metal beads. Yeah, it was just that one bead. Okay. The more more knots you make, the less beads you have to use, and the less knots you make, the more beads you can get on your bracelet. So you wanna think that of, through when you're designing as well. And the size of your leather obviously indicates the, the size of the knots, um, but also, as I described before, if you're using a barrel knot, those are typically wi wider or larger than a knot like this too, um, depending on your leather. damaged this a lot when I was trying to push it through that one bead. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> These are actually the colors of the company that I, one of the companies that I work for. <laughs> My day job, I should say. Okay. We're getting close to the end. And actually I want to 
measure it again. We're at six and a half inches, including the loop. The good thing about this bracelet that I'll show you in just a moment, it's gonna be adjustable. And you guys aren't gonna believe me when you see the end of it. <laughs> and you're gonna be like, that's it, but it really, it works. I have several like this and I wear them. I really do wear them. Okay, so we're gonna put this guy on here. Pull that knot tight. And we're at, oh, we're at seven and a half. Sorry, I'm putting it around my wrist to see if it's long enough. It's not long enough. I'm gonna put one more of the blue and silver. You also wanna make sure that, yes, you have an idea of how long you want the bracelet to be in mind, but it also depends on how thick or how wide in diameter the beads are. If the beads are wider, you have to make your jewelry longer to make up for the circumference circumference that's being taken up by the beads. Thanks, Kathy. Okay. Now, I could add another bead on here. You know, Mary, that's a good question. I would say between seven and a half to eight inches, but it really depends because if you have a petite man, a regular uh, just seven inch bracelet could work. So, um, okay, so there is our design and it's actually colorful but still masculine. It's actually like a unisex sex bracelet. Um, I would wear it, I'm going to wear it. <laughs> this is staying with me. Um, now I wanna make sure, so we're at about, with the loop, we're at about eight inches long. And like I said, you can make this as long as you'd like. Sorry, it's not on the screen. I'm just making sure that it's going to work. You know what? Since it's adjustable, I'm just going to put one more bead on just to be careful. And then we can always take it off if it doesn't work out. So put on one more African Jasper, white African Jasper. Move that all the way down, but I'm gonna actually get a little bit of wiggle room between these these two, okay? And then we're gonna glue this part right here because honestly, this is just the clasp. We're I'm going to keep it on the, le the leather just to make sure it works and then we'll cut that off. So we made sure that our loop would come over our bead and it'll settle there. And there's that's why you want this part to be eight inches or seven and a half inches before this, because this is sticking out. That part's not going to um, be included in the bracelet. Now you're thinking, oh, that's not gonna be secure. It is secure. It's not going anywhere. Do you know how easy that is? You made your first leather bracelet. <laughs> um, I'm using, these are white, um, African Jasper beads and these are Sunset Demortorite beads but they're both from the Trailblazer collection from Northern Lakes and Glacier Park from Jesse James Beads. So that's not going anywhere. It's not slipping off and you could do this with any bead as long as it fits through your leather fits through the bead. Um, now our, our glue is dry here so I'm going to take a moment and please 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 don't cut your anything but the tail because you'll end up having to redo your bracelet. And then I'm just gonna make sure this fits on my wrist because it would be a tragedy if it didn't. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to put, I'm actually gonna do my little cut and you can make a, a little tail here. You can put a little like, if you have a bead that'll fit through your leather or your leather will fit through your bead, you could put one right on the end there. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna have a little bit teeny tiny tail. I'm gonna grab my GS Hypo Cement. Ooh, we wanna pull that. It's not 100% pulled. There we go. 
And I'm just gonna glue this knot to make sure that puppy doesn't go anywhere. And then here you go. Simplest, easiest, cutest <laughs> leather bracelet ever with three colors and some, some metal. And that's a perfect stacker. You can then go ahead and make some stretch bracelets. You can wear two or three of these. You can make it into a wrap because you can make it as long as you want. And if you make it into a wrap, it can double as a necklace no matter or depending on how long you make it. So that is number two. Can you believe we've already made two bracelets? I just love how rustic both of them are, but in a different way. Um, I don't have a clock. Can somebody tell me what time it is? Or at least what part of the hour it is? Thank you guys. You guys are so sweet. Um, I'm going to keep these out. <laughs> yeah, Mary, I do half the time keep keep uh, trying to get the, the cap of the glue on. Um, so we have, what are we going to do with all these extra beads? So we have all these, we have more beads, but... I don't know if you guys knew this, there are several other strands in this collection. So we have Ash, which is like a cream with gold and silver. Super pretty. Um, we have Obsidian Cave. So Obsidian Cave has Bloodstone, um, Horn, like this is a horn bead, Bloodstone, which is this like green with red dots, and Larvakite. Okay, so it's about 5.47. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. And then, wow, time goes fast. And then we have um, Hidden Canyon that has um, tiger eye wood. And actually, I don't know which one this is. This is kind of, it might be Picture Jasper, but I'm not 100% sure. And is there one more? Redwoods. We also have Redwoods. So this has some tiger, red tiger eye and I think some other type of jasper on it. But those are the different, um, if you're not into blue or cream or black, they have, we have some brown and green and cream going on too. So I wanna make um, a bracelet to coordinate with this one. We're just gonna do something really quick. Say you have five minutes, you have to run out the door to Father's Day and you forgot to make something. Maybe you didn't have time to make this guy. Yeah, time really does fly when you're having fun. We're gonna just make a quick stretch bracelet. Um, I have some elasticity. <laughs> the cool thing, Beetle On makes it in black. Isn't that awesome? So we're going to do just a really fast stretch bracelet. Here's some, we're gonna use some of this bone. Okay, we're gonna use, I have two of these left. I have all of these demotorite, demotorites, gosh, I know I'm saying that wrong, demotorite. <laughs> and we also have these golden obsidians. We're gonna make a cool bracelet. We're gonna make a really cool bracelet. So um, I'm gonna be really sparing with the the metal, I'm just gonna use those four, okay. Um, I am thinking we're gonna use these guys in the center. So I have one, two, three, four, five of those, perfect. So I'm putting the center on first, just to kind of get it strung, and then we can see where we land. So those look good with that. What size beads? Um, these are, th so this one's 10 millimeter, this one's eight millimeter, and I don't really know what size this is. It's probably like 12 by eight, maybe. Maybe smaller, maybe 10 by eight, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I don't double the cord. I would never double the cord when I'm making bracelets. You can, if you, it, this is one millimeter cord, so you probably don't need to. I'm gonna put one of those on. I'm gonna put one of these guys on. I 
don't know that I love that piece of metal there. Um, I think maybe we'll, we, you don't always have to have metal and it'll be good if you're wearing other metal if we don't have it on there, but we'll see where we go from here. Okay. Yeah, these buffalo beads are really cool. Okay, I like that a lot. Go two of these. We'll go blue. Just want to see what these look like. No. Well. These are also bone, but they're, um, yeah, I like that better. They're uh, matte. Two, three. The other side. So I could do four. I'm kind of color blocking on this bracelet, um, or at least bead blocking. Um, it helps to build up your colors and make it a little bit more bold than distributing them throughout the bracelet. Sorry, going off screen to measure. Okay, so we're at four inches, including the middle part. Two and a half without the middle part. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna put one more of these on. So that's, I'm color blocking and bead blocking. So um, black, gray, blue, and then we're gonna go back to the black. These are, these are actually kind of like green gold, but they look black. Blink, green, gold, black, I guess I would call it. Okay. Three. Perfect. All right. So then, um, so this will be right here is the middle of the bracelet. So I'm going to put three more on. Mary, but somebody said B. Oh, cooking with hot oil. <laughs> um, okay, so then we'll put in another one of these. So we're just doing the exact same pattern going back around. One, two, three. this guy so yep we're right between seven and a half and eight inches which would be a perfect length for a man and um, I'm gonna cut my string here and before you do anything I'm sure many of you have made stretch bracelets but if you've not gotten into stretch bracelets let me tell you it took me 22 maybe 20 one years before I made a stretch bracelet after starting making jewelry. <laughs> so if you haven't done one, there's no shame, but you always wanna stretch before you tie. And that's because if you don't, the elastic will stretch for you and your bracelet won't stay the same size. I know what you meant, Mary. <laughs> Which bracelet, Catherine? I'll show all three at the end, just in a moment. So, and then I'm just gonna tie. One, two, and three. Okay, and 
Um, get my glue. Put it on the knot. Just a little. And then after I glue it, make sure you close your glue. And then I, after I glue the knot, do that, okay? So um, we'll cut close to the knot, probably about an eighth of an inch away from the knot. And then I slowly slide that knot into the, be the bead next to it. And it might be a little bit too big for that hole. So we have this guy and then um, it'll go inside of there, but oh, he's a little thin too. So if you can't hide, I would always say, you know, put the bead, put the whole, the, um, knot next to a bead. So it would have probably been better if I put the knot right here next to a large hole bead. I really thought he would f slide inside of one of these bone beads, but I'll fix that. But you guys need to learn from my mistakes, which I make all the time. Oh, he, there he goes. He, he fit. He fit inside that bead. And then you just want to redistribute the rest of the beads if it stretched it out a little bit. So here are two matching bracelets. And one's a little bit bigger than the other, but this one is more like a cuff, and this one's just stretched. So if you need them, they can fit. But definitely more masculine than you usually see on my channel, that's for sure. <laughs> so if you don't like you know, the, the silver in there or anything in there, I think you c it would definitely be okay if you omitted it. Um, but the, co the dark color blocking and bead blocking is really what brings out the masculine portion of this bracelet. So can you believe it? We made three bracelets today. We made this one. Definitely can see a guy wearing this for sure. We made this matching bracelet, although they don't need to be worn together. And then we made our leather bracelet, our beginner leather bracelet. And they're all rustic and fun using all these beads. So I hope you guys had a lot of fun today. Actually, I, I honestly would wear all three because now this one matches this one because it has some blue in it too. So I would wear all three. Thanks guys, thank you so much for playing along with me today. Um, I will post this video on my um, YouTube channel over on Turquoise Street. And if you haven't already, I would say join my bead group on Facebook called Brittany Speeds. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Happy Memorial Day. Bye bye. crazy with your hair. <laughs> you need to be groomed, girl. Hi. Hi, cutie. Hi, cutie. Thank you.